So what if I told you this car you see right here, this rear quarter panel, the entire car is paying right here in this garage exactly where it sits and the results came out just like this? You want to know the secrets and how it was done? Hey, check it out. It's me right there. Stay tuned. All right. So is there really any secrets to doing this? No, not a second. Because you guys have been watching this whole car come back to life here in this garage. What there is to tell you is how do I get to this point? Because you know I painted this thing here in the garage. It is not a perfect paint job. It had its faults. Now, that rear quarter panel looks phenomenal. The door looks like somebody sanded all the paint off it. And the front fender here, I'll only show you a little close up on that. It's exactly how it looked when I was finished painting it. And all the stuff up there is what it takes to make it look like back there. And I'm gonna show you how we make this happen here. All right, so now I'm gonna wrap myself out how bad this really come out. Now what you see here, there's some obviously some dust in the paint. No if hands or butts about it. Um, now if you see here, bit of a dry line. Didn't get the coverage that I really wanted to on this, but I, I'll tell you another thing that happened to me, which doesn't typically happen, is it got hot. Um, you guys watched and paint the car in the previous video, if you did see that. The sealer coat went on great. The base coat, all three coats on, smooth, slick, very minimal or no dirt in it. Clear coat, first two coats went on great. Third coat, started having some issues where the paint wasn't flowing. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. It got hot. Uh, the reducer and stuff I'm using was meant max temperature about 80. It was getting nearly 90 degrees by the time I got to painting the clear coat that afternoon. And then by I hit the fourth coat, well, I was fighting it. And I just couldn't get the paint to flow out. So you can see all this texture here as I'm moving. The, the paint's laid out nice and shiny. It has a good reflection to it, but I don't like that. But that's what we're going to get into, using this stuff right here that you see to correct this paint and make it better. Some people call it cutting and buffing, color sanding, or paint correction, whatever you want to call it. But I just call it making it look a whole lot more good like it does back there. Now, this is the brand that I use. Now, I'm not sponsored. They're not giving me anything at all. I'm just showing you how I do it and the process to make it all happen. Um, this is the materials that I use. This is a Unigrit sandpaper. I really find it works good. It's a little spendy, but I tell you, it works great, and I'm super happy with the results. I use their basically rubbing compound just the same. There's one more step over here, but this is where we're going to stop at for today's video. But as you can see, we, we go up in grit. Now, this one here, well, this is something completely different. It's 800 grit sandpaper. This stuff will level this off really quick, but also burn through your clear coat. So that being said... I probably would never cut and buff somebody else's paint job or somebody else's car because I know I put four coats of clear on this car. I have plenty of material to an extent to work with to get it all leveled off and planed off. Let's just say, yeah, your buddy says, I have my car painted. They put four coats of clear on it and you hit it once, twice, say 100 and you cut through the clear coat. You've just ruined their paint job. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't recommend doing someone else's car. Do it your own risk because this may not work out so good. Even with four coats of clear, you could risk burning through the paint job. So, but I, I'm pretty confident that I'll be okay. There's a few things to keep in mind that I'm gonna show you while doing this, but we're gonna start off here with 800 grit. Now I have my sanding box. You've seen these before. This is a super flexible one. I always typically use a sanding box. It keeps the finish nice and smooth. And this is the stiffer rubber one. It still has some flex to it, but definitely a lot stiffer. Start with this one first. We're gonna try to keep this thing as flat as we can on surface and knock off all the high spots on the orange peel, any dust nibs, and if we had any runs, well, same thing. You keep working that with the 800 grit to level it all off to begin with, and then we keep moving up to the finer grit sandpaper, finer grit, finer grit, until we get to 2,000. We're gonna stop at 2,000 on this. It works pretty good. Uh, if it was a dark color like black or a navy blue, I'd probably go as high as 25 or 3,000. Um, we're not going to do that. Then we go ahead and start doing the uh, buffing here with the buffing compound. So well, let's go ahead and get started. I'll get a chunk of 800 and show you what this looks like. All right, we're going to start here in the top of the fender. You can see the texture in the paint. This is the 800. It's that yellowish color sandpaper. I'm not going to push hard. I'm going to let this thing glide right over the top. And as soon as we start doing this, uh, you'll start seeing it's highlighting all the highs and lows. You can really see the orange peel now on this. Now, again, now think about... Um, color sanding or I guess what we're doing here you don't want to do circles back and forth or maybe up and down but circles makes it harder to buff so this is the one time you don't get carried away you don't have to say sand it to a line but I got to teach myself that it's okay just to kind of cut it back and forth and saying we're just kind of letting this glide across the top of the paint um, and then eventually you'll get it all not completely flat but we're just using this to really expedite the process because well this is necessarily the most exciting thing to do but again, just let the paper glide across the top. I don't use any water here with the 800. Um, one, but this isn't wet paper anyway. You can buy wet uh, 
sanding 800 grit. But the reason I don't is the water, it hides what's going on. I can watch this as this progresses immediately as I'm sanding it. I'm seeing everything that's going on here. So if I keep sanding in the same spot, and as you can tell, this has the orange peel, and the orange peel is almost gone, I'm going to have to stop here. I don't want to go much further than that because I don't want to leave any deep sanding marks that won't come out. So about the point where it looks like this is good. This needs some more sanding. But you can see how quick this is cutting that thing down pretty quick. And when it comes to body lines, don't go over the body lines. Stop before the body line. Um, this here is a little spot of dust. I'll get it here on the camera. I'll move it down. A little dust nib right there, but this just glide over the top of it a couple, two, three times. That dust is, is wiped right out of that. But I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and hit the whole fender here with 800. I'll let you guys see what that looks like, and then we'll move up to the next step. Here, what it looks like up close, as you can tell, I didn't sand every last bit of the orange, but you'll still see some spots in it. I don't want to get too carried away because I don't want to have sand marks that I can't cut out of it. And this is the reason why I don't use the water. I can see all this with water, it actually makes it look 100% level, and you won't know if you've actually dug all the way through or not. That's where that dust was at, but it's coming out pretty good. So, I think the next thing we're going to do is still the same thing, we're going to stick with the not pliable, the stiffer, or the firmer block. We're gonna jump up here to 1200, but we're gonna add water to the mix here. And uh, that's gonna help lubricate, I guess, keep the paper last a little bit longer. And it definitely sands really clean. And I like using a little spray bottle to keep using a little bit of water as I work. So we'll go ahead and get a piece of the 1200 cut out here. And I'll get the camera going here. I'll show you how that looks. All right, so then what I have here, the 1200 paper, firm block. And just basically, same thing. This isn't the sticky bag, so you got to hold the sandpaper on here. But just a little bit of water and almost all of the same pattern. As you can see, I stopped from all the way up here to the body line. With the 1200, I'll probably inch up just a little bit further. But we're gonna do the same thing, but now you can't really see what's left to go here. You don't know if you got the orange peel out or the dents or the little divots out from all the dust and stuff. So that's why I don't like using the wet for the first course. I like to see what's going on, really monitor how much I'm digging in here. As you can tell, what's coming off it, it's actually a white sanding dust. It's not autumn bronzer in color. This is a base clear. Now, this car was not base clear. You started seeing this, the, the dust is turning paint color, like this is autumn bronze or a, maybe a, a gold color coming off. Then I've sanded too far and I've burned through the clear coat. Stop sanding immediately at that point. Um, or if say the car was red and your, your sanding dust starts turning red tint, stop sanding. Uh, but in this case, all I keep seeing is the, the white sanding dust, and we're okay. We're only cutting into the clear. Um, but how do you know when to stop? We'll keep sanding here in the same spot here and do a check here. Same thing, light pressure, a little bit of water, try to keep the dirt out. All right, this is the, the right tap on the faucet in the house. It's special magic water, right? No, it's just tap water. Um, keep working in here. Same thing, you don't want to do circles, but... If you try to do the same, just maybe back and forth motion, it's a lot easier to buff out when done. Now again, this is 1200. We're going to bump up here to 1500 once we're happy with this level. 1200 does probably 90% of the work, so you're going to sand probably a little longer with 1200. That's going to finish getting rid of the orange peel, runs, dust nibs, or any kind of uh, parts you don't like in the paint. All right. Now, how do we know when we're done sanding? That always seems to be the question of the day. So what we'll do here, we'll have a take a look, see here, and see what it looks like. This kind of works like a squeegee. that dry for a second and you'll see what comes back out of the paint here if it's got any texture to it or not. We can expedite a little bit of dry it off action here. Now hopefully I'm gonna leave some spots here that I don't see in. Looking pretty 
good. Now it's starting to dry here, but you'll see a little bit of spots here. It's still orange peeled, but this here looks really good. You would think it's 90 degrees today. It would dry a whole lot quicker, but the humidity is really high. Oh, it actually did come out real nice. I don't see any orange peeling at all whatsoever here. Super smooth, just a little bit here on the edge of the back of the door here on the fender. So I'm gonna have to sand that just a little bit more and up here just a little bit, but you can see now, no more orange peel. That's all one level surface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit back here with a thousand again to get rid of what's left here. You see the little spots kind of poking through here. If I were to buff that back out, it's gonna have a little bit of an orange peel texture to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and work just this back edge with a little more of the 1200, and then we'll bump up to 15. All right, now check out that trailing edge. No more peel left in it. So let's go ahead and bump up now to our 1500. I'm gonna sand this section here next. So same process, just go ahead and a little bit of water and sand it, but it's gonna go a lot quicker because I've already got the uh, panel reshaped and everything done. We're just gonna try to basically erase the, if there's any 800 sanding marks left, any of the 1200 sanding marks, we're gonna try to bump up to 1500, reduce any kind of sanding marks. We're gonna do that. So like I said, this section goes a whole lot quicker. Go. You see it says 15, so we'll do, I'm gonna stick with the stiff bore since this is a relatively flat surface. I'm gonna try to keep this as flat as possible to get that nice mirror reflection going on. Now, if it was a, a radius section like the, the top of the fender here, up here, I would probably use the more pliable box so I don't dig through the paint, but a relatively flat panel, I, I, I try to stick with the more rigid sanding block. And as you can tell, still not doing this bare hand and I just, really feel it makes a big difference in the finish if you use a block for almost all of your work. So there's a time and place, that's why I have that softer pliable block, but I still don't ever go with just my hand for sanding. I just seem to have, it gets more ripples or waves or I just don't feel like it, it leaves the nicest finish. I mean, you still say the same thing. I'm not doing any circular pattern, I'm just kind of back and forth, maybe at a slight angle because my brain's just wired that way, but try to keep it just back and forth. And you see, I'm still getting some white sanding dust off, but it's not nearly as much because 1500, it doesn't cut a whole lot of paint off. All right, well that should do. I'll rinse this off and we'll bump up to 2000 then. All right, 1500 is all done. I'm gonna bump up to 2000 here, do the same procedure. Still using the rigid block at this point. Uh, again, I just think it leaves for the, the panel a smoother finish when it's all done. So that's what we're gonna stick with here. I'm gonna go ahead and sand just this area here with 2000, then we'll jump into buffing it and see how this thing just totally transforms this paint job. You saw how textured and rough it was, and this is how you get that mirror finish. Same thing, and same, when you get to the body lines and stuff, uh, don't don't pick the sanding block over the body line. Stop at the body line, and then go below the body line. Work back up to. I know that's always show up on the camera. Same as the topper. Don't go over the body line. Stop just before it, and even when buffing, just use caution around high points. So that's where the paint is actually a little bit thinner at your peaks of a body line. It just the paint doesn't lay on as thick as it is on the flat panel. So you just got to be careful in those areas. And the other thing I forgot to mention, and I guess I make mistakes every once in a while, this paint now is actually right at 13 days old. Um, I don't like cutting and buffing real quick. I like letting the paint sit for a while. The clear coat that I use, that PPG 2042, um, super forgiving stuff, I can cut and buff it. It looks phenomenal, holds a shine, and it is durable. Then you can cut it and buff it two weeks later or even later and does fine. There are some clear coats out there that actually set up harder and harder and harder with time and it makes it very difficult. But your data sheet with the paint should tell you which ones do not, you know, color sand or buff after so many days because it just doesn't sand very good and sometimes doesn't get the gloss back to it. So now I feel like I'm kind of stuck in my own ways. I love this clear coat. I know what I can do with it. Um, the worst great for garage paint jobs for 
cutting and buffing, it comes out nice and it is very durable to paint. So again, use what you want. This is just what I have done. And this is the results we're gonna get here. And you're gonna think it's pretty cool looking here. So Again, not very much dust coming off because this is 2000 grit. It's, it doesn't have much grit to it at all, but you can tell it still takes some paint off. We're still turning a bit of a white powder here or I guess mess around the side of the car. So it's still removing material. Give that a rinse, let it dry, and we'll work with some compound here and make it shine again. All right, this is getting ready to say, we're gonna do the buffing stage here now, but look at the paint. This is kind of like where we started, rough, in between, and you can see all these little circles. That's what you wanna get rid of, that orange peel. Eventually it gets looking like this. This is all finished with 2000 grit. If I can get the angle of the light just right, Look at the door. I've already finished that with 2000 grit. There's actually a reflection in that paint. It looks dull straight on, but you get the idea. Now, it's actually telling me we're really, really level. I don't see any more orange peel. I don't see any weird spots. Definitely no runs, no dust. Feels super smooth to the touch. So now, we'll go ahead and buff this section here out. You can guys see what really happens here now. All right, well, let's get you up to speed. Here's what I'm going to use. These are a foam buffing pad. I guess there's wool, all kinds of flavors, shapes, and kinds. I use the foam ones. I've, I've found that I less chance of burning through like areas like here on the peak on the body line or stuff like that. This is a little more forgiving. You still trash a paint job if you're not careful, but this is what I use. And the different colors equals different grit. We're going to use black and blue today because that's just what I've got. And it seems to work nice. This one here works really good. And what I'm putting it on here is my DeWalt buffer. This is a single, it isn't a dual action. That seems to be more modern. The dual action buffers, I don't own one. I've had this thing for years, still works. I'm going to continue to use this, but if you're purchasing one, I'm not going to say go this way or the DA style. Do your own homework. Do your own research. This is just what I use because I have it and I paid a lot of money for it and it still works great. Uh, it has an adjustable speed. I'm just at about a thousand. Uh, I don't buff really fast. Keep the heat down and chance of burning through the paint and I still get the mirror finish out of it. So it seems to work really nice. So we'll go ahead and put this on the buffer here you got to get it perfectly centered where it wobbles there's actually a cardboard sleeve to get that centered but we're going to put that on now let's talk rubbing compounds now there's all different kinds but uh, mcguire's makes it pretty simple see this little scale on the side see what it says here on top that means you've got some serious buffing to do we're going to cut pretty deep cut pretty heavy we just got done sanding the crap out of this car took the shine out so we were going to start with some of the heaviest stuff they have work it into the paint then once that's happy, you can see here, whoop, not so heavy grit. And then there's actually one more step here to remove the rest of the soil. So I'm not going to get into that until the car's all done. And I've got the chrome on it. And then I come back and do the one last buff. But you get the idea. We're going to put this compound directly on the foam pad, not on the paint. I was told a long time ago not to put it on the paint. I can't tell you why. Maybe you can, maybe you don't, maybe you shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't. But I think I have an idea, maybe at least stains. I don't know. But nonetheless, put it directly on the pad here. So I'm going to do, get the camera going. And I'll show you how to work this area here. Then we'll go ahead and do the door too while we're at it. A little dab here on the wheel. And of course, slow speed to begin with because this stuff slings everywhere. And you can turn out the car's not covered with it because well, I don't like the mess that it makes. But I uh, barely pull the trigger. And I'm not holding this thing completely flat. I have a little bit of an angle. That seems to work best for me. And once I got a nice even coat, that's not full speed, then I'll pull the trigger and lock it and keep working it here. Now that's locked at a thousand. You can already see how quick that is shining up.
not sure what you guys are seeing, but yep, that looks pretty good. Now, if you look carefully, this looks a little bit hazy. Now, some of that's just leftover compounds on the paint, and some of it we just need to go with a finer compound, but watch this. If I wipe it off, I bet you it looks really super slick. Look at that right there. Now, see? That's the results we're going for. We still have one more stage of buffing. It's just, just a little hazy, but no more orange peel, no more imperfections. Looks super nice, and this is a garage paint job. Wipe off all that residue. All that cleaned out. Then we'll jump up to the next stage here and really put some shine to it. There we go. Give you a quick little walk around here. Now you can tell the depth, the shine, texture, everything on this paint looks really 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 sharp you can see all the crap now in the back side of my garage you guys never see that side of the garage so um coming out great but you can tell the difference here you know shiny a little bit hazy looks awful and this is what we started with doesn't look bad 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 but doesn't that look a whole lot better i think so but it's just a little bit of haze the camera doesn't pick it up and the thing about lighting natural lighting outside hides even more blemishes here in the garage is really really going to see all the problems but there really isn't any, it's just slightly hazy, but that's okay because we've hit it with super rough compound. We're gonna go ahead and now step up to this one right here, a different compound. This is 44737, a little smaller diameter. So they'll work about the same way, kind of keep it at a bit of an angle to the paint. I don't leave it flat completely. I have it up just a little bit and let it kind of glide across the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole door, maybe those little corner of the fender here, and we're gonna call it good. The moment you all been waiting for up close here, look at that reflection. You saw the thing come right back. Now you see all the crap on my garage wall. Like I said, there's one more step we gotta do once the car is all assembled, come through with a micro super fine polishing compound. But you get the idea. Look at the finish here. It just lines up nice, super clean. And let's see if we actually got the door adjusted right. That's how the gap would go. The transition between the door and the fender, nice and even. My reflection doesn't change. That's what we were going for. Now, the, so the secrets to this, well, the secret was lots of prep work. Get all behind the scenes things done. That's why you have your restoration. You're in control with how it's going to go. You can set your panel gaps. And this is how, what it could be when it's all said and done. And one thing I forgot to bring up, though, well, almost finished here, but the flexi block. When do you use that bad boy? Well, right here on the fender, the really tight radius. Again, don't go with your bare hand. I'm afraid it might cause some ripples. Uh, but this here, this is the time I would use the really flexible one here in that tight radius there. And even here on the top of the fender where it's kind of dished out, I would probably use it up here just a little bit. But I've got a lot of work up here. And this is the same stuff. It's still an orange peel, but you saw how it works. Hit that with 800. 1200 15 2 leveled off polish it and you can see me waving at you so there you have it cutting and buffing color sanding paint correction whatever world you live in i'll stop here because you go any further it looks kind of crappy but i got to finish up the front fender there the hood i got a few more panels to do i'm going to do that behind the scenes i wanted you to get an idea what it takes to correct well a garage paint job let's be honest it's a garage it's not going to be perfect but you can still make it look like a high-end paint job. It probably adds 30 to 40 hours to build, to the build to cut and buff a car, but I tell you, it really brings a shine to the next level. And even your high-end paint shops that use a paint booth, they do the same thing, but they probably isn't nearly as dirty or as textured, but you get the same results. It just takes a little bit longer. And hey, that's what this channel is all about. You doing it yourself as much as you possibly can, have some fun, learn a few things, and of course, save a few bucks. So. Um, next thing, if you look out there on the uh, orange car, which you can't see because it's all bleached out because of the sun. Um, let's see if I can change the camera. Oh, hey, look at that. Um, you see that white thing on the roof of that car? Well, that actually goes right here 
on the great pumpkin. That's the vinyl top. I got the roof all scuffed and ready. So I'm gonna work on, once I get all the cutting and buffing done, I'm gonna put a vinyl top on. I've done convertible tops, but I have yet to do a vinyl top. So this is gonna be jump in the deep end, see if I sink or swim. You don't wanna miss that. So don't forget to come back, subscribe, share with your friends. And I definitely appreciate you all you guys here helping this channel grow. I'll tell you this last month has really done exceptionally well and i know it's only because of people like you watching sharing and just you know following along i hope you find this stuff helpful entertaining or as i like to say the right way the wrong way in the vvg way so this is how we do it appreciate you following me on the journey and uh, we'll catch you guys next time